When it comes to wildlife, there seems to be certain animals that most of us love, and certain animals that most of us hate. Some animals are loved because they offer us something, or because they're otherwise cute or interesting. Hated animals are usually hated because they're dangerous, or because it's very hard for us humans to relate to them. This is mostly the case with insects and reptiles, but really these creatures are important for the health of the planet. Both loved and hated creatures play an important role in their ecosystems, and their lives and behaviours are beneficial to other creatures. This is a very positive way to look at life on this planet, but there are some creatures that don't seem to benefit anyone or anything. A parasite is an organism that lives in or on another organism of another species, and benefits by deriving nutrients at the other's expense. This is of course a very one-way relationship, and really one of the only positives of having parasites on this planet is that they provide food for other animals, and there are even animals that specialise in eating parasites. Some common parasites such as ticks can spread diseases, but some of the worst parasites on this planet can even control your mind. In this video I will be going through just a few of these parasites, as I will be going through three of the worst parasites in the world. The first parasite that we will be focusing on can be found anywhere around the world, and even though it's quite famous, it doesn't have a common name. Its scientific name is Toxoplasma gondii, and it is capable of infecting virtually all warm-blooded animals. Toxoplasma gondii is an obligate intercellular parasitic protozoan, and is famous worldwide for causing toxoplasmosis. Although it can infect all warm-blooded animals, really this parasite wants to find a cat. Felids are the only known definitive hosts in which the parasite may undergo sexual reproduction, and this means that it always wants to find its way to a cat. In most cases, a parasite can be an inconvenience for the host, but has little impact on their day-to-day -day life. This is definitely not the case with Toxoplasma gondii, as it's able to alter the behaviour of its host, and even alter the behaviour of us humans. When this parasite finds its way into a rodent, it's known to make the rodent fearless and more likely to take risks. In a study in 2011, it was found that rats that were infected with this parasite seemed to show almost a sexual attraction towards cat urine. This is the complete opposite of their usual defensive response to the scent, and is the parasite's way of getting itself inside of a cat. This parasite seems to have a different effect on different animals, and in some cases the effects aren't all negative. It's been suggested that Toxoplasma gondii can change the behaviour of infected wolves, and in some cases it makes them more likely to become pack leaders. Wolves that have been infected with this parasite are more likely to leave their home packs and strike out on their own. A large number of wolves in Yellowstone are known to have this parasite, and it's thought that they may have become infected by interacting with cougars. This could either be from stealing prey from cougars, or by preying on them directly. From the wolves studied, the ones that were infected with this parasite were known for taking more risks, and they were also known for being more independent. This could yet again be another way for the parasite to find its way to a cat, but it's proven to be beneficial for the wolves too. Perhaps the strangest and scariest thing about this parasite is that it can infect us humans. Most of the time when Toxoplasma gondii infects a human, there are no symptoms. This means that you can have it without knowing, and this parasite has no cure. It's hard to estimate how widespread this parasite is, mostly because almost all cases go unreported. It's been estimated that around 16-40% to of people worldwide are infected, but in certain areas such as South America and continental Europe, the rates can be up to 50-80%. to In a lot of cases, you can be suffering from toxoplasmosis and not be aware, but in recent years it has been linked with something a little more serious. Not only are people with toxoplasmosis 2.5 times more likely to have OCD, but it's also thought that they are 2.7 times more likely to have learning difficulties than uninfected people. Other studies have suggested that Toxoplasma gondii is linked with schizophrenia, and this truly is worrying. So far the studies haven't been conclusive, but as this parasite can alter the mind of other creatures, it's not crazy to suggest it's linked to schizophrenia. This parasite is a great example as to why we all hate parasites, and really changes the rules on what a parasite is capable of. But for our next parasite, we will be heading into the oceans, and more specifically heading into fish, as we have the tongue-eating louse. The tongue-eating louse is a parasitic isopod, and tends to enter fish through their gills. The males and the females of this species tend to feed on different parts of the fish, as the females go for the tongue, and the males attach to the gill arches beneath and behind the female. It's uncomfortable to think that you have a parasite anywhere on your body, but one of the worst places to have a parasite is in your mouth. 
Luckily for the fish, in most cases they are unaware that they have the parasite, as the female parasite essentially replaces their tongue. Once the female finds its way inside of a fish's mouth, she will sever the blood vessels in the tongue, eventually causing the tongue to fall off. She then attaches herself to the remaining stub of tongue, and this parasite effectively serves as the fish's new tongue. Strangely, there's not a lot that we know about this parasite, and is most commonly seen when fishermen pull infected fish out of the ocean, or when an infected fish turns up in a fish market. Luckily for us, they're not thought to be harmful to humans, but if they are separated from their host and handled, they are known to bite. Even though this parasite can have a negative effect on the fish's life, it isn't fatal. But if a fish has two or more of these parasites, it can cause them to suffer. Truly, this parasite does look like something straight out of a nightmare, and I'm sure it makes many people happy that they aren't fish. But for our final parasite, we will be heading into the world's tropical forests, as we have the zombie ant fungus. This fungus was discovered by Alfred Russell Wallace all the way back in 1859, and at first, it must have been hard to comprehend. This fungus targets ants in the tribe Camponatini, and is able to completely ruin these ants' lives. If you thought toxoplasmosis was bad, this fungus takes it to the next level, but luckily it's not able to infect us humans. When this fungus infects an ant, it grows through its body. It drains its body of nutrients and starts controlling its mind. Of course, most ants are social creatures and rarely venture off on their own. This fungus completely changes this mindset and convinces the ant to leave the safety of its nest. After this, it will ascend a nearby plant stem, and they usually reach a height of around 25 centimeters before eventually clamping down on the plant. This is usually the height that has the perfect temperature and humidity for the fungus to grow, and eventually a long stalk will grow from the ant's head. This long head will eventually evolve into a bulbous capsule, and this capsule is full of spores. When these spores are released, they can infect more ants, and this essentially zombifies them and also dooms them. If you're an ant and you have been infected by this fungus, not only are you doomed, but you no longer have any friends. When one ant becomes infected with this fungus, the colony uses a social immunity technique, and this often means that they forcibly remove the ants from the nest. This means that the fungus can't infect the whole colony, and also means it's game over for the ant. Evidence from fossils has shown that this fungus has been interacting with ants for around 48 million years, and I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Strangely, this isn't the only fungus that targets insects, and it's quite common, especially in South America. For most people, zombies only exist in fiction, but parasites just like these prove that zombies are a real thing in the animal kingdom. If you know of any other strange parasites that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But to be honest, I'm not looking forward to going through them. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.